is Kevin from DIYDork.com and today I want to show you how to make a vintage hubcap clock. I thought this was a really cool idea for my dad. It's a Christmas present for him and the reason I'm using this particular hubcap is because it's off of a 1950 Plymouth convertible which is his favorite car. And uh, anyway I found this one online, I looked around and I found several on eBay but most of them were about 40 to 50 dollars but they were in pristine condition and I kind of felt bad about drilling a hole through one and turning it into a clock. So I actually found this one for $10 plus about $9 shipping, which was, you know, about half as much as the others. The thing was, it did have some dents and dings and a little patina on the stainless steel. And I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to like that or not. But once it arrived in the mail and I looked at it, I thought, you know what, this is actually really cool. It has a lot of history to it. There's some stories behind all the dents and dings and it's seen thousands of miles on the road. So I thought it'd actually be a really cool wall hanger. So it'd be perfect for a clock like this. So all I did was, like I said, I went online and I found a vintage hubcap, and then I also found a clock mechanism that's battery operated, and I was able to attach a uh, uh, like a picture hanger on the back. And then when I bought the mechanism, it come with hands, but they were about half as long as these, and they were a little too hard to see. So I found I bought another uh, pack of hands that were a little bit bigger, and then I spray painted them. So anyway, in this video, I'll show you exactly how I did that. And it's really easy to do. It doesn't take long. It's like maybe 20 or 30 minutes. And if you have a drill and you can put some nuts and bolts together, it's really, really simple. So anyway, I hope you check out this video and tell me what you think, okay? Okay, for parts to make your vintage uh, hubcap clock, you're going to need, of course, the hubcap. This is a 15-inch stainless steel hubcap. Uh, then the drill. And you're going to need a drill bit. You only need one that's going to be big enough to fit the very center shaft of the clock mechanism. And then, of course, you're going to need the clock mechanism. And then the little hands that come originally with it, I thought were a little too small. So I bought some larger ones that are probably about five inches long. I figured they'd look better on a 15-inch hubcap. And then uh, that's the parts to make it. Then the supplies to put it together, you're going to need some masking tape and a marker or a pen. I'm using a marker so it's easier to show up on the uh, video and then a tape measure and I got one that looks like an old vintage cassette tape and if I can find a link to where I found it, I've had a few people ask, uh, I'll show you where you can get something like that. And then also right here, kind of hard to see, is a, um, that's a picture hanger for a wall and then I'm going to glue it to the back of this with some epoxy. I think this is like one minute epoxy so it sets up really fast. And then since these hands are already brass, I don't think they would look very good with the stainless steel, so I'm going to paint them. I'm going to paint them black and red, but that is optional. And, of course, the bigger hands are optional, too. Uh, so anyway, that's all you need. Pretty simple. Okay, now if you're going to paint your clock hands, I recommend you do it first before you assemble the rest of the clock. That way they have enough time to dry, so that one's time to put them on. They'll be, they'll be good, and the rest of the clock will be put together and makes it a little faster. So I'm just spraying the uh, minute and hour hands black and then the uh, other one's going to be red. Alright, so to assemble the hubcap what I'm going to do is I need to find the center. So I'm going to place a piece of tape about where I think center is going to fall. So it's probably going to be somewhere around here. And then I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to measure a few different spots. And so because of the curvature of this, it's showing it's 15 and a half inches long. So half of that would be seven and three quarter. So I'm going to make a, a line right at seven and three quarter, both sides of the tape measure. And then along that line, I'm going to measure again and 15 and a half. And then half of that is seven and three quarter. So it's right at the end of this one. And I make an X. And that X is right on center. But the problem I have is that the Plymouth script, which is the brand of the car that this hub can't come off of, the center is right in the middle of the letter. So I don't want to drill through them. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drop it down on this line here about half inch so that when I drill the hole, it doesn't even go into the lettering. So I'm going to drop it down just slightly, probably about right there. And I'll circle it so I remember to drill right there later. Okay, next what you want to do is you want to find a drill bit that shaft is the same diameter as the shaft of the uh, clock mechanism so that when it drills through, it's just, just as big as that threaded shaft or even just a touch bigger. You don't want it huge and you don't want it small. You want it just barely bigger than that. So then, then you simply just line up on the little uh, cross mark you made earlier and then you're going to drill your hole through it. And you want to be careful with this metal because if you push too hard, it could either 
uh, dent it. Or what it could do is if you drill too hard, it could like push a bunch of metal out the back and then it's going to be really hard. You're going to have to like file it down uh, to get the clock mechanism to sit flush to it. So anyway, just drill your hole and go slow. And it should be good and we'll check out the back and see how it looks and it's actually a nice clean clean hole so you want to be careful about that and uh, like I said if you push too much or you go too slow it'll have a bunch of burrs this actually has one tiny burr that I could probably just bend right off but you want to be careful to not get too many or you're going to have to like I said file it off or whatever so okay so now what you want to do is attach the uh, picture hanger with some epoxy so you're going to spin it around and find center on here. And I actually marked it earlier, but basically you just hold it, find center wherever it, it balances and your finger is. Mark that spot. So I got it right here where I'm pointing. And then you can take a screwdriver and kind of rough up the surface a little bit for better grip. And you're going to take your uh, instant epoxy, put a little bit on that spot. And you have about 30 seconds or so to work with it if you get the instant stuff. So you put it on there. Then you put on your hanger and kind of push it around. Hold it in place and then just wait for it to dry and it'll stop moving in about a minute. And then to be good to work with. Okay, so once your hanger's on, you can see it's right up here. Once it's dry and usable, what you're gonna do is you're going to assemble your clock mechanism to mount it to the actual hubcap. So the very first step is the uh, thing comes with a black rubber grommet. So you pop it on, you turn around, you find bottom, which is when the battery's on the bottom. Okay, so that would be on the bottom of the clock. So you push it through the little hole, slide it through the front. Okay, then it comes with a little tiny brass washer, so you drop it on. Then it comes with a little tiny brass nut. And right before you tighten it, you want to make sure that this is lined up. And this one's easy because the Plymouth is level with the hubcap, so I'm leveling the mechanism to it once it's good. Tightening that nut. Okay. And then once it's tight, the mechanism is mounted and in place. So then you want to mount your hand. So the first one is the hour hand and it has a round hole in it. So, and there's a little, there's the, the washer, the nut, then there's a little bit of thread that sticks up and then there's a piece of plastic. So this one goes to the plastic and the instructions said to go to 12 o'clock, which would be up and down. You don't want it touching the thread or it won't move. So I went about halfway down on that piece of plastic, as you can see there. And I have it going straight up to Plymouth. Okay. Then you're going to mount your minute hand. And this one, instead of a round hole, it has kind of a slotted hole in there, if you can see. And it actually has a little slotted piece on here uh, up top. So you drop it on there. And then it comes with an itty bitty little brass washer. So I'm going to tighten that on too. This one might be a little more difficult to do. But once it's on, then you just take your second hand and you push it right on top. And there you go. Now you got a cool clock mounted to the old hubcap. Pretty cool. Very, very simple. All right, so how about that? Didn't take long at all, really easy. And if you have a favorite car or you know someone that loves cars and you can find a hubcap off of it, this is a perfect idea to do and give them to them as a gift or just make it with them or whatever. It doesn't take much, it's pretty cheap. It's you know probably 20 or $30 to make, which is cheaper than when you buy them online. And uh, I thought it was a really cool idea. Now, also, I wanna let you know that on my site, I have a tutorial that has a bunch of pictures and uh, better instructions with you know a little more details and things like that that I couldn't put all in this video. And you can download it for free on the site. I'll put the link where you can get it. 
And then also within that tutorial, I'll have links to where you can find some of the parts to make it so you don't have to search around. Or if you're in a small town that doesn't have a hobby shop or whatever, uh, you know, I, I found some places online where you can find like clock parts and where to get ideas for to look for hubcaps and that kind of thing. So anyway, I hope you check that out too. And I thank you for watching this video. Thank you.